Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. We're back at section 4.4, trigonomic functions of any angle. And let's get to it. Um, we've been going through all of our trig functions, haven't we? We've been going over and over and over and over again. What do we know about sine? Sine is the y over the hypotenuse r. Cosine is the x over the hypotenuse r. Tangent is the slope or the y over the x, which you can see the reciprocal is going to be on all the other functions as well. And so we are talking about our trig functions and we're using our unit circle to apply each one of those functions along so let's get to our examples example one we're gonna take a look at a value in trig functions now you can see it says let negative 3 positive 4 be a point on the terminal side so here's my reference point okay here's my reference kind of angle at 0 degrees and you can see at negative 3, we go negative 3 units, positive 4 units right here. So you can see, let, let's take a look at what's happening here. We have negative 3 in our x, we have positive 4 in our y. If we do the Pythagorean theorem, we get 3 squared, negative 3 squared, 4 squared, it gives me a 3, 4, 5 triangle, okay? And this is our terminal side. So we want to find what's the sine of my angle. What's the sine of my angle? So remember, that is my angle right here. This little angle right there would be what we call my reference angle, and we'll get to that. But this angle of what we're going to look at right here is we're, we got to take a look at sine of the angle. Sine of the angle. So sine of the angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And so you can see my opposite is 4 over the hypotenuse of 5. And so using our trig functions, the sine of the angle equals positive 4 over 5, isn't it? Okay. Whereas when we take a look at the cosine of the angle, the cosine of the angle is dealing with the x value over the hypotenuse, the x value over the hypotenuse. And so what is the x value? The x value is going to be negative 3, isn't it, over the hypotenuse of 4. And so the cosine of my angle is going to be negative 3 over 4. And that's how we get to this point right here from my uh, what we call my reference angle. Now if I want to know what's the tangent of my angle, the tangent of my angle is my y, what's my y? That's 4 over my x, which is negative 3. So we have negative 4 thirds. And of course I could find my cosecant, my secant, and my cotangent by just doing the reciprocals of each one of those things. But that is the sine, cosine, and tangent of this point. And now let's take a look at at this, it says given sine, sine of my angle equals negative 2 over 3. Now think about what's sine. Sine is the y over the hypotenuse, isn't it? Now the hypotenuse, I know this is going to be an amazing thing, is the hypotenuse can never be negative. The hypotenuse is, is a scalar quantity here, so I know my y value is equal to negative 2. I know my hypotenuse is going to be equal to 3, which means I can do my Pythagorean theorem, can I? I have x squared plus your y squared, negative 2 squared, equals your hypotenuse squared, 3 squared. So we have x squared plus 4 is equal to 9. So you subtract x squared is equal to 5, which means x is going to be equal to the square root of 5. Now, it might be positive, might be negative, right? When we do the square root, it could be positive or could be negative. And how do we know whether it's a positive or negative? Well, they've given me something else right here. They give me and said, what is tangent of theta is greater than 0? It's positive. Now, remember, we said all students take calculus, right? Which means it's an acronym for all things are positive, sine is positive, tangent's positive, and cosine's positive, okay? Everything else is, is negative. Now, it says tangent has to be greater than zero, which means we're either in quadrant one or quadrant three, aren't we? Now, which one are we in? Quadrant one or quadrant three? Well, in quadrant one, everything is positive. Is that true? No, your sign's negative. Your y value is negative. And you can see how if my y value is negative, I have to be in this third quadrant, which means my x value is also negative as well, which means this makes this negative root 5. Negative root 5. They wanted me to find the cosine of my angle. Cosine of my angle is the x, that's negative root 5, 
over the hypotenuse, what's my hypotenuse is three. Okay, they want me to find the sine of my angle. Sine of my angle is, <laughs> I don't think they want me to find the sine. We already know the sine. Tangent of my angle. I'm going to blame that on my intern. Um, tangent of my angle. So what's tangent of my angle? Tangent of my angle is my y value, negative 2 thirds, sorry, negative 2, divided by my x value, negative root 5, which means positive 2 over root 5, or if you rationalize that, 2 root 5 over 5. And you can see tangent's positive there because your, positive, your y and your x canceled out. They were both negative there. Okay? A little bit harder of a problem. Let's take a look at this problem. So it says sine of my angle equals 4 over 5. So sine, remember what is sine? Sine is equal to y over hypotenuse, and it's equal to 4 over 5, which means I know my y value is 4. I know my hypotenuse is 5. Now think of Pythagorean theorem x squared plus y squared equals hypotenuse squared. You have to be very systematic in doing these problems. You just go step by step by step. What do you know? Let's keep going. Which means my x value has to be 3, right? This is my 3, 4, 5 triangle. Now remember that x could be positive or could be negative. I'm not sure. What did they give me? They gave me, they said tangent, they gave me this little stipulation here, tangent is less than 0, which means tangent is going to be negative. Well, quadrants are tangent negative. Tangent's negative in this second quadrant and this fourth quadrant right here. Now you can see in the second quadrant our x is going to be negative but my y value is going to be positive isn't it? Just again in this quadrant right here. In this this fourth quadrant my x is positive but my y is negative. Now take a look my y is already, I already know my y is positive 4 which means I must be in this second quadrant. You can see how this little stipulation always narrows down to two different quadrants. Okay, which means this x value has to be negative, doesn't it? Negative. And I want to find my cosine of my angle. Cosine of my angle. Cosine is x. x is negative 3 over hypotenuse, which is 5. Cosecant. Cosecant of my angle equals my hypotenuse over my y value. Okay, my hypotenuse is 5, my y value I know is 4, so I have 5 fourths right there. And so it's the reciprocal of the sine value. Okay? They, they take a little bit of work, guys, um, but, and they're very systematic. They, uh, they require you to think those problems that we just went through. Now, of course, we just, we just kind of talked about this thing called a reference angle. The reference angle is, you can see, if we are in quadrant 1, the reference angle is the same as your, your angle, isn't it? Okay, it's the exact same angle. If you're in quadrant 2, whatever angle you have, the, the reference angle is 180 degrees subtracted from it. You can see in quadrant 3, it's this angle minus 180 degrees to find that reference angle. And in quadrant 4, it's going to be 360 degrees take away that angle to find what we call the reference angle. So let's try to find our reference angles. So our first reference angle, uh, first angle is 300 degrees. Okay, remember we have zero degrees, we have 90 degrees, we have 180 degrees, we have 270, and we have 360, which means 300 degrees. We're talking right here. Okay, which means we're all the way around to 300 degrees. So how would we find out this reference angle, this angle right in here? Well, I'm going to take 360 minus that 300, and that gives me my reference angle is 60 degrees, isn't it? Okay. Uh, it's pretty easy, right, to find reference angles. Okay. Reference angles really help uh, when you're trying to evaluate our trig functions. Now we have 2.3 radians. 2.3 radians, remember, we have zero radians. We have pi. What's pi? 3.14, right? What's, what's pi over 2? Uh, pi over 2, 3.14 divided by 2, that's about 1.57, isn't it? But it's pi over 2, which means 2.3. We're, we're talking, we're maybe like right here, 2.3 radians. 2.3 radians. So we have 2.3 radians. Remember, this is equal to pi radians. So how would we figure out this angle right here, this little angle right here? Well, the reference angle would be equal to pi minus 2.3 or 3.14 minus 2.3.
Okay, that's all they're looking for. You might say, how in the world is that all they're looking for? That's all they're looking for. Okay, so now we got negative 135 degrees. So remember, let's let's start with negative 90, negative 180. Oh, 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 we went too far. So let's kind of stop right here. Okay, that's negative 135 degrees. So how would we find out our reference angle? Our reference angle is going to be this angle right here. So uh, how would we figure out what that is? Well, we want to know this reference angle. So we have 180 degrees, take away 135. Uh, 180 degrees, take away 135, and we get a reference angle of 45 degrees right there. 45 degrees to find that reference angle. Reference angles, sketch them out, baby. Sketch them. Sketch it like you can't sketch anymore. Uh, and anyway, um, here we're going to evaluate each trig function. So using the unit circle is going to be big time for this. Using the unit circle is going to be big time. So we have cosine of 4 pi over 3. So go to 4 pi over 3. It's as easy as that. Go to 4 pi over 3. Cosine. Cosine is going to be this first value. That's equal to negative 1 half. You can try it out on your calculator. Make sure you're in radians if you're going to do 4 pi over 3. Okay. Tangent of negative 210. Tangent of negative 210. Well, that negative 210, let's put that into a, a, uh, a, a real number by adding 360. Okay. So we have negative 210 plus 360. Okay, so that would be tangent of, really they're asking for a tangent of 150 degrees. Okay, tangent of 150 degrees. Let's find 150 degrees on my unit circle. That's right here. Remember my tangent is my y value, that's 1 half, divided by the x value, or the reciprocal of your x value. So 2 over root negative root 3. So we're negative 1 over root 3, or negative root 3 over 3. Okay, and that would be the exact value of that function. Uh, last one. Let's go to, uh, it says cosecant of 11 pi over 4. So 11 pi over 4. Let's take a look. We have 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, <laughs> 7 pi over 4, 8 pi over 4, 9 pi over 4, 10 pi over 4, 11 pi over 4. So we're really, this is really cosecant of 3 pi over 4. Okay, now we could have subtracted 2 pi from that and found out that a little bit quicker, but we can just do it. So what is the cosecant? The cosecant is the, the reciprocal of the sine. So we're going to take this sine value of root 2 over 2, and we're just going to flip it 2 over root 2, which I'm going to do the rationalizing. So I multiply the top and bottom by root 2. That cancels out, and we're left with square root of 2. Square root of 2. So that was trigonomic functions of ugly angles, or non-acute. Okay. Section 4.4, trig functions of any angle. See you guys. Catch you, catch you on the flip side. Peace in the Middle East. Yo, I'm out of here. Peace, I'm out.